Good morning or good afternoon whenever you end up watching this. Sorry for the poor quality and the noise of the road of cars driving by. It's the best I could do in short notice for this lecture. I wanted to give a, a little bit of an introduction to Linda Martin Alkoff's essay that I asked you to read for today, for Wednesday, uh, in anticipation of her coming to our campus and giving some chats uh, around campus, but it, one big talk uh, this evening, on, I think it's in the in the chapel around six or something. But uh, you'll find flyers up anywhere, uh, especially on the uh, second floor of Carroll Hall on the philosophy wing. Uh, but we're we're delving into some socially sensitive topics that some of us feel very eminently, and some of us can uh, live within the privilege of not. Uh, having to deal with on a regular basis. I normally appreciate the opportunity to introduce and to get into the topic of race and understanding it philosophically uh, in person, uh, but that's not going to work right now, so this will have to do. But by way of helping us understand some of the beginnings of what Alkoff wants to talk about in this essay, I have a couple of uh, just notes to provide for you to hopefully help you in your processing of this as well. So she's talking about issues of race and racism. Uh, those two terms are not synonymous, so please try to keep that in mind. And one of the things that she wants to do with this essay is um, really straightforwardly address uh, some of the elephants in the room. We have people on one side of race conversations wanting to minimize or say race isn't um, in play and if we give it play then it makes it real and, and, and we're ma making the, pro uh, the whole issue worse. Other people say there is only race, it's uh, deep down within, it's, it's in our nature and so we got to figure out how to deal with that. And one of the things that we see is that it's really we're not really getting very far in our social conversations um, unless we're talking to people within our own group who already share the convictions um, and basic structural framework for understanding the concept of race itself. So one of the things that she does is she provides or she talks about different ranked taxonomies or ways to uh, categorize, right, difference. And this is largely a product of uh, Western, i.e. Euro-American academic enterprises stemming forth from the Industrial Revolution, actually before that from the Enlightenment, where uh, under the rubric of science, we want to understand our universe. And so in understanding, we're going to rank things according to kind, right? And so we have the whole seven, um, the taxonomy of everything in a living in existence, right, where you've got the kingdom, the phylum, the all the way down to genus and species, right, as a way to make sense of difference so that we can um, do what we can to make sense of and, i.e., understand uh, what we're doing. But the modern concept of race that she talks about in the beginning of the essay is really a product of uh, 1492 on, where colonialization in spreading of empire is mixed up in the same basket with uh, under Europeans mainly understanding who they are or defining who they are according to who they are not. That is, uh, they are not these people with these specific physical characteristics. One of the main difficulties with this method of taxonomy, this method of categorizing things and putting them, is that it and she deals with this more in the middle of the essay, is it puts the onus of knowledge on our perception of physical difference rather than anything real or concrete. And so she, she'll get into that later in the essay when she starts talking about common sense and things as well. Uh, but here's a couple, of, couple more ideas here. So as she comes up with these different taxonomies to rank difference according to uh, what we do is when you put something in a category you have that category 
you have the the, the parameters, the, the boundary markers for that category already in place before you put something in that category to say, yes, it fits here, right? So take physical beauty, for instance. You know, we talked about with Phaedrus in Plato's Symposium, you know, uh, beauty was primarily external. It was bodily, right? And I've seen PBS specials about how, like, beauty, physical beauty can be marked by symmetry in the face and all, you know, we can draw grid lines on people's faces and see how far out they are. If that's your only way of defining beauty by the physical, right, symmetry, these other things, then that, then everything you put in that category has to conform to those boundaries. And the thing is, is we're the ones who create the boundaries. We're the ones who create the taxonomies. And so in that sense, uh, something like race or race as a category of difference is a, is a wholly constructed thing. We made this up, okay? Um, and if we made it up, we can change it. That's one of the benefits of it as well. But one of the things she really wants us to, to understand is that, yes, we made it up, which means it's somewhat arbitrary, but it the concept of race, the category of race, does indeed impact the way that so many of us live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And she draws from her own philosophical, phenomenological approach. Uh, you can look that word up, phenomenology. That's the, um, the philosophical sort of like energy behind the work that she's doing that allows her access to understand this concept both as a construction, something that we make up, and also as a real concrete lived reality that so many of us are impacted from um, based upon many other, many other things. Okay, so one of the things is when we come up with these taxonomies, we come up with this category and we want to lump something in this category, we have, we end up crossing other lines, other barriers, and lumping other things into the category. So if we want to define beauty according to physical symmetry, right? The danger with that taxonomy, with only defining beauty in that one way, is that we can then overlay or lump all of our moral, behavioral, and rational difference as well into that category. So that we can say, if you don't have these characteristics of beauty, you also are lesser on the scale of moral behavior, um, rationality, these other kinds of things. Now, beauty is one thing, but when we start talking about race as a category of difference, that really, really becomes problematic because we're putting our perception of physical difference and we're equating that perception with moral, behavioral, and rational difference as well. Does that make sense? So, so that, and this, we see this played out in racist structures that privilege or give more access to social privilege to people who have these characteristics fit really well within the boundaries of this category but don't fit it so well in the boundaries of this category. So uh, as she moves through she gives us and I want you to try to really understand in her essay the three different types or um, ways that she categorizes or taxonomies uh, what um, three different approaches to understanding issues of race. The first is nominalism, the second is essentialism, and the third is the contextual approach, and the contextual she shows us has two, a subjective and an objective uh, force both within that can play simultaneously off one another. As you do your work to try to make sense of these different categories, try to keep in mind a couple of things. First off, try to keep in mind how or who, rather, you know who you have encountered who might fit well within one of these categories. Don't name names, don't write it in the uh, discussion post, right? But just try to keep in mind um, that these are real ways of thinking that people will lump themselves behind. One of the things I like to do, or 
here's one illustration for those three different um, categories, nominalism, uh, in name only, essentialism, having to do specifically with our nature or our essence, right? And contextualism, where it's, we have a combination, kind of a middle way between those, uh, those other ones, right? Uh, think about a rainbow. And when we're thinking about the boundaries of the categories themselves. So a rainbow, if you look at in the sky, has distinct colors, right? And I'm not trying to equate the colors of the rainbow to colors associated with race, but this is just an example. You can clearly make out violet and yellow and red, and you know, the, the different colors. And that's fantastic. But when you're asked to differentiate when does one color become the next, the issue becomes a little bit more difficult, right? So with our nominalist group, if a nominalist was placed in the middle of a rainbow, if that was possible, right? Uh, you would ask, they would look around and they would see no borders. They would see a fluidity between the different colors and therefore say there are no borders between. So violet is just as valid as yellow as being the same thing. So let's not worry about it. Let's just go on with our lives. So that's more of a nominalist approach. They don't see any boundaries and therefore they want to collapse the whole thing and oftentimes have or live within the privilege of being able to ignore, thinking that ignoring um, the concrete realities of race because it's a social construction is going to somehow make it better uh, but it ends up just reifying it uh, our second our essentialist um, disposition if we put them in the rainbow as, as well they're going to definitely pinpoint the the markers between the colors right to say yes here is when you know you're exactly in violet and here is when you know you're exactly within yellow I know those aren't right next to each other but, what, but you get the point, right? So the essentialist wants to say there are distinctions here. These things are real. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the difference that we see in the spectrum. Does that make sense? And then our contextuals uh, approach uh, with race, if we're going to put them in our rainbow as well, is... What they're one of the one of the things that they might try to focus on is okay, where are you specifically in this particular point in time, in the rainbow, and what is that in relation to? How are you in relation to it? So yes, you're in the middle space, the liminal space between um, yellow and red, for instance, right? I'm, my rainbow colors are way off. Anyway. Um, that's definitely red, that's definitely yellow, but it's only those and to the varying degrees because I'm standing right here, right? So we can acknowledge with the contextual approach that there are differences, but that the, the, the demarcations between the individual colors in the rainbow are um, contingent upon or we perceive them based upon where we are in, at that particular moment with respect to the other colors. So, sorry, that's a lot to say that uh, there's, there's so much in this essay uh, that we can continue to talk about, and I might open up our discussion more. We'll see. There's another essay on f for Friday uh, by the same author, so we'll try to engage that one as well. Uh, it goes a little bit in a different direction, but I'll provide a little bit of guidance, hopefully, for that as well. Please log on to World Class, submit your... Uh, two posts for each day that we're not meeting physically in class. And uh, if you have questions, if you have concerns, uh, if the things that we're reading or the discussions we're having are triggering, please send me an email uh, personally and I can, I can address it. Uh, keep in mind, especially with a subject such as race uh, and racism, that we are here to explore and understand to the best of our rational ability and to honor the humanity in the people around us who experience difference differently than we do. And so post, engage the discussions critically, but also be mindful that, um, that this is, this runs deep, right? And I, and I want to honor, um, our collective experience and have a, a sort of an 
as honest as we can and as honest as we're and vulnerable as we're willing to be in these conversations, I want to dig in as, as deep as we're willing to go. So thank you, and I shall hopefully see you in person soon.